Thank you. We're going to invite you to be seated as the Salkahatchee youth continue to bless us with open the eyes of my heart. So let us pray together the prayer of illumination. Lord, open our minds by the power of your Holy Spirit, that as the scriptures are read and your word proclaimed, we may hear with transforming joy what you say to us today. Amen. Our scripture reading today is from 1 Corinthians chapter 1. Verses 18 to 31. The message of the cross is foolishness to those who are being destroyed. But it is the power of God for those of us who are being saved. It is written in scripture... I will destroy the wisdom of the wise, and I will reject the intelligence of the intelligent. Where are the wise? Where are the legal experts? Where are today's debaters? Hasn't God made the wisdom of the world foolish? In God's wisdom, he determined that the world wouldn't come to know him through its wisdom. Instead, God was pleased to save those who believe through the foolishness of preaching. Jews ask for signs and Greeks for wisdom. But we preach Jesus crucified, which is a scandal to the Jews and foolishness to the Greeks and the Gentiles. But to those who are called, both the Jews and Greeks, Christ is God's power and God's wisdom. This is because the foolishness of God is wiser than human wisdom. And the weakness of God is stronger than human strength. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Okay. 
The message of the cross is foolishness to those who are being destroyed. If I thought, if I thought for one minute that it would bring somebody to know Jesus Christ crucified and accept Jesus as their Savior, I would take off my shoes, I'd walk right down there and I'd cut a cartwheel. And you'd really laugh then. But if I thought it would bring somebody to Jesus Christ, I'd do it. What would you do? What would you do that someone may know that Jesus Christ died for their sins and that salvation is possible? In the name of the one who gave his very blood, that you might be saved, I ask you this morning, what will you do for the sake of the cross? How foolish will you be? Will you be inconvenienced? Will you be spent? Will you love the unlovable? The ones who smell. The ones who have nothing. The ones who are different from you. Will you love your neighbor for the sake of the cross? Will you listen to the same story 5,000 times and say, yes, ma'am, and yes, sir? Will you sing a new song? Will you really hear the word of God even if it makes you squirm? Will you give your money to the foolishness of the cross? Will you give your time? Will you give your presence and your prayers? Will you give your faithful witness to the cross of Jesus Christ? Will you give your sweat and your tears to the one who gave his blood? To the world, what we do may be foolish, but by his blood, we are saved. This morning, we are in the presence of those who have given. Thanks be to God. Well, as you can see, we, were, we had a great week. The kids did wonderful. It's just an amazing thing that can be done. And now, let the youth have their say. <laughs> so, for those of you that have already heard my testimony, sorry, it's not changing. God taught me patience this week. Or tried to. Um, some of the catchphrases for this week, Chris and I were talking about this in between services. One of our favorites is, hold up, wait a minute, put a little Jesus in it. 
And um, one of the homeowners said that on the tour that we took before we decided what site we were going to work on for the week. And catchphrases like that, it's something that the whole camp says for the rest of the week. It's something that we use to pick each other up, and there's just something that we won't forget. 20 years from now, I can hear Chris coming up to me, hold up, wait a minute, put a little Jesus in it. <laughs> um, one of the other catchphrases was, the schedule is a living, breathing document subject to change. And those of you that don't know me, I am very OCD about time and being late and getting everything done and doing it correctly. And at Sakahashi this week, I was blessed enough um, to be on the same site as Ryan and Harold, who are not always the most timely people. <laughs> and so learning to be okay with being 30 minutes late to lunch, an hour and a half late to dinner, you know, I mean, you get used to it. <laughs> and although I was very frustrated the first few days and I was getting angry, I realized that I'm not in control. I can't do everything and I can't control everybody as much as I would like to. Um, but I learned that I really just, I'm here for God and I have to give it to God and he'll take care of it. He'll make it happen. We were able to make her house safe, dry, and warm. And although we didn't make it beautiful, it was a better place for her to live. So that's what it was about. This is my third year at Sakahachi, and I was one of the last people to get picked for a site. And the site I, want, I got was the one I wanted, or was the one I needed to be at. And at the end of the week, all the people on the site became a family. And everything fell into place. We were able to get done everything we wanted to get done. And we were able to make the house a safer and healthier place for the family to live. This was my second year in Sakachi, and I think it was better than the first one. I had a large group this year, but we all got to we got along together, and we had a lot of laughs and a lot of memorable moments. Like I told this to the people at nine o'clock, we baked cookies on the roof because it was so hot with tin foil, and one day I got left at the school and had to ride a cop car to my site because everybody left without me. <laughs> and, and I made a lot of friends, and I made friends with the people who were in the same room as me. And I'm looking forward to, forward to next year. This is my first year at Sakahatchee, and um, I learned a lot of things, not only physical things like how to fix a house and how to pull dead cats out from under it. Th there were dead cats under the house we were at, seven. But um, I also learned two, maybe three spiritual things while I was there. One of them was that, well, this kind of incorporates into spiritual, is that I don't despise coffee as much as I thought I did. <laughs> and I realized that Jesus is kind of like my cup of coffee in the morning gets me going, keeps me energized about what I'm doing, and people sometimes need their cup of coffee like they need the cup of Jesus sometimes. And um, I was just thinking about something I heard a lady say when we were um, doing the end tours at the end of the week. She came up and she said, thank you for fixing my, I think she said house. She said she didn't want to call it her home because her real home was in heaven with God, and this was just temporary. This was her house, not her a house is not a home. And another thing that I learned was while I was hanging out with my friend Sawyer and his family, he has an aunt, very, very, very spiritual lady, and she's very firm in her beliefs. 
but she's not the greatest listener. So we were talking scripture and things, and her beliefs were set, and she didn't, not that she didn't want to hear what she had to say, but she didn't want to say listen to it. She was set, and she wasn't going to change her mind. And I feel like the church sometimes is also very closed-minded, and the church sometimes takes that, and we drive people away. And that's the exact opposite of what we should be doing. We're the hands and the feet of Christ. We should use those hands and those feet to pull people in, not push them away. And I'm proud to say that this church is very, very welcoming. And I'm glad, I'm glad to call it my church. Uh, this is my uh, eighth year, or eighth time going to Sargassi. Um, uh, just, uh, Saga is an amazing thing. Um, every year I go, uh, I'm excited weeks in advance, and they can't get here close soon enough. And just the things you see when you go there, the people that you meet, the houses you work on, um, just everything there is just so amazing, and I just feel blessed to go ever every year. Um, I can't look forward enough, you know, to getting there and seeing all the kids uh, who go, their first timers or uh, people who have been there four or five times even, just seeing the look on their faces, it reminds me of how I felt whenever I first went there. And it just, it's an amazing experience that uh, I'm glad I got to uh, experience. you can, you should go one year, uh, try it out, and experience for yourself one day. Thank you. Well, this is my first year going to Sakahatchee, and I learned a lot, not only from the two stooges, Harold and Ryan, that um, I was on the site with. Um, but from the youth, I learned a lot from them. There have been um, obstacles in my life that have kept me from going to Sakahatchee that I have been worried about. But God took care of those, and those weren't even an issue. There were other things that were obstacles that I came across while I was there, but of course God took care of those. And um, it, was, it was very, it is a renewing of your faith. and very wonderful to experience that, um, like as Ashlyn said, God is in control, not us. Um, our homeowner this year was, you know, not very personable, not very, um, she didn't spend a lot of time with us. Other home sites have homeowners that come and do devotion with them and spend time with them, but our homeowner was not like that. And um, we had some youth that, you know, were not very happy with that, but um, this being my first time and, you know, I haven't experienced it any other way, it was a good opportunity to say, well, that's not what we came for. We didn't come here for a thank you. We didn't come here to be recognized. And in the words of Kenny Barfield, one day I told him how nice he looked doing those dishes. <laughs> um, he told me, this is the Lord's work. And that was my mental motto all week. This is the Lord's work. It's not about the home, making the homeowner happy necessarily. It's about making her home safe, warm, and dry. And whether she's thankful or not, it doesn't matter because that was the Lord's work. And um, so it's a wonderful experience. Um, even if you think you can't, you can because I did. <laughs> um, Never thought I could, but and uh, also learned that there are no small jobs. You know, picking up trash um, to laying down shingles. Um, it's all God's work, and that's what we were there to do. So, thank you for your support. We're, we're missing a couple this morning as well. Hannah Warren is on vacation, as well as uh, Valerie and Tyler Dawson. Um, weren't able to make it, so, um, and Jennifer Brown, that was here at 9 o'clock, but wasn't here today, yeah, had to go back to work, is that it, is that it, okay. um, God is good, all the time. and all the time,
Um, the, uh, the, just the ability to be able to go do this uh, mission trip every year has been a huge part of my life for the last 10 years. Um, you know, I, I said at 9 o'clock service, it, it's kind of, it ranks up there with, with you know, Christmas, Easter, Sokahatchee. Um, those are the three, three, three really big weeks in my life. Um, and as Gene said, you know, every year it's a renewal of faith. You, um, you really bond with the people that, that go year in and year out. There's some people who've been there for 20 some odd years and haven't missed, you know. Um, but it's like a huge family. It's almost like a big family reunion. Um, but this church has, has blessed this mission um, more than words can say. I, I can, you know, none of us could do this without y'all, with your support, your prayers, your outpouring of love, money, contributions, tools, donations. Just, um, I, I can't imagine, um, you know, getting up on a Saturday morning and leaving my house and just going straight, straight up there without coming in the fellowship that, that takes place before we leave and the prayers and um, you know, the same thing whenever we get back. There's, you know, parents and preachers and uh, there to welcome us home. And it's always a great feeling to know the support and love of the church is, is with us. And it's felt not only when we leave and when we get back, but during the week, too. Um, as far as the schedule, I just follow God's schedule. I, <laughs> I, I you know. If, if the Lord if the Lord leads us to lay shingles faster one day than the next, then we might get to leave a little bit earlier. If not, we're there until we get the roof covered. Because uh, if not, he'll he'll teach us a lesson. So, um, but again, thank you so much for all the years of your support to this ministry. It's a um, you know my only regret is I didn't get into it as a kid. Um, whenever I was a youth. I was invited a couple times, and you know, of course, I was too busy or had something else to do. Um, but I know the way that it's it's changed my life as an adult. I can't imagine what the innocence of a youth could get out of it. So um, it's definitely something that, like uh, Bennett said, if you've ever felt the nudge to go, please let us know um, because it's a wonderful experience and. You know, words, words can't describe its awesomeness. Thank you. We will be going back again. We've already set the date, the week of July the 16th. So we have to have our uh, paperwork in by April 1st, this, this coming year. Our, our camp is, is supposed to be cut off at 150. We had 230 this year. And we were talking about it at the meeting and was trying to figure out what can we do. And somebody said, well, as long as the churches support it up there that feed us, because some of these churches started feeding us when there was 24 people. It's a big difference. And eventually a fellow said, try to stop God's love. And that's all he said. So thank you all for the support. If you could go up to the altar, there's a chain there that was used at Salkahatchee. You might have seen Harold holding it in the video. It's a sign and one of those wonderful things that you bring back that you can hold in your hand to remind you and us that in this kingdom we are all bound together. And as far as I'm concerned, I have been in the presence of Jesus Christ this day.